Hi, I'm Raina Morgan with iHealth2, visiting with Dr. Cheryl Selman. Dr. Selman, isn't it characteristically believed that only women experience bone loss and that typically it happens at menopause and that they also treat it typically with estrogen? And that's not necessarily the best treatment, correct? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, but we just have to have a little bit of a history lesson. Sure, that'd be great. How this all started. There was a book written in 1966 called Feminine Forever. It was written by a gynecologist mm. named Dr. Robert Wilson. And uh, he supposedly did one study for one year upon which he wrote his book. And his book basically said that women without estrogen will shrivel up, become caricatures of their former selves, become, um, you know, basically useless. And he had the solution, which was estrogen. So, and in this book, he said the ovaries die and stop producing estrogen. And his book was a big seller. He was quoted in medical texts, and hundreds of articles were written about him. And it began the trend to put estrogen into the program for women's health. And, okay. um, and, and so that really launched this whole hormone journey we've been on. Based on a lot of myth and misinformation, I want to say that his one study was deemed flawed by the FDA. He was later discredited as a reputable researcher, and he also was set up by the, uh, by the industry, the, by the pharmaceutical industry, making estrogen, so he would use his name. He was a shill in a sense. He was just, oh, wow. You know. So it was all based on lies and misinformation. So to enhance this industry, another reason had to be created, and primarily that was the result of the fact that after 10 years of women taking estrogen replacement therapy with uteruses and without uteruses, mm -hmm. It was, it was discovered by two studies that came out simultaneously in 1976 that there was an 800% increase in uterine cancer in the previous 10 years. And they attributed that huge increase, and many women died from uterine cancer, was due to estrogen replacement therapy. So it should never, never have been prescribed to women. It was unfounded. It was definitely a push to sell the drug. and. When this scandal came out, the drug companies had to quickly regroup. They added a synthetic progestin, mm -hmm. called it hormone replacement therapy, not estrogen replacement therapy, and then had to find a new reason to get women back on this drug who left in droves because of its known carcinogenic effect. So what do they do? It sounds like we've been used and abused here. We have been lied to and deceived and mm. betrayed for many, many years. And the way that uh, they got us back okay. was they created a condition that we could not resist. It was called osteoporosis. And the symbol for osteoporosis was this old woman with mm -hmm. a, you know, her dowager hump. Mm -hmm. And those were ads that were displayed in medical journals and everywhere. To st and, and I remember one ad. And it says, if you give her one of these, which is the HRT pill, you won't have to give her two of these. And there you see the crutches. So it was a scare tactic. It was a classic example of using scare tactics and advertising to get us to go back on the pill. And so the industry created a new condition. And they said that, that women are more vulnerable, that menopause is the time when we start losing bone, and that their drug, estrogen, was going to stop bone loss. And that's how women got back onto the use of HRT for bone loss, which we now know has had no effect on, on stopping bone loss. You know, it is, it is not menopause that creates a, a time of bone loss. Bone loss occurs far earlier than when we arrive at menopause. It is not a female problem, and estrogen is not the hormone that rebuilds bone. It's progesterone that actually is known to stimulate the cells that actually rebuild bone. Okay, and, and products like Fosamax and uh, Bonevo, you know, bone replacement therapy, uh, how do they stack up? Well, very popular, very popular drugs mm -hmm. now are a classification called bisphosphonates. So okay. as you said, uh, Fosamax, Boniva, there's one a day, there's you know one a week, there's one mm -hmm. a month. Well, here's the, the abbreviated version of those drugs. Those drugs are, are um, metabolically poisoning the cells. They actually kill bone cells. It's an illusion to think that these 
drugs are actually helping to rebuild bone and stop loss. It's an illusion because the cells have, uh, bones have cells that eat away old, dead and dying cells. All tissue do this. Every, okay. uh, every part of our body does this. The cells get, die and get reborn. It's also true in our bones. So we have cells that eat out and clear out old, dead and dying parts of the bone. And then we have new cells that replace it and build new bone. So the Fosamax and these bisphosphonate drugs go in there and stop the removal of old, dead and dying cells. So it stops it, it like freezes this remodeling process. So when you stop the process, you also cannot lay down new healthy bone cells. So because it's, it's stopping this process, long-term use of these drugs will actually create poor quality bone and lead to uh, greater risk of fractures. Now there's something that's come to light just recently. People who've been on these drugs for a period of time are noticing that their jaw bones are deteriorating. Really? And as a result, many people have had to have total replacement of their jaws because it's been eaten away by Fosamax and by these bisphosphonates. And this was on the news because this is the first place, the jaw bone, the jaw area is the first place where we experience bone loss, which is why people have periodontal problems. Okay. And um, these drugs have many side effects. They are very toxic to the liver. They uh, really are a disaster to our health. They, are, they will never increase bone density, never, and then bring a, a long litany of health problems with them. Well, thank you for addressing that, Dr. Solomon. That's very vital information. You're very welcome.